Hello, welcome back. Another episode of GM Facepalm. Bringing you more options and endless vexations from your GM and players presenting these races or nonsense. Maybe. Anyway, today, the might. A variant race, also the Pesci. Pesti, sorry, Pesti. And a race I made on my own called the Mitipede. A fusion of might and centipede. So here we go. Starting off, mites. Really awesome creatures. They are in Beast Dairy 1. Very ugly, diminutive looking creature. But with some really nice enhancing abilities and some great ecology to go with it. The mites. Um, they had some fantastic spotlight in Shattered Star in the beginning. There's some great artwork that goes with that with spiders and webs and spider mounts. And I think they were in Kingmaker or something underneath some sort of a bowl of a tree. Uh, some sort of passages and such. Maybe that was for a module. But anyway, uh, mites are awesome. I have been tempted with these thoughts of implanting pre-generated characters into Weeby Goblins, or Weeby Goblins 2. Uh, you got the four whatever goblin pre-generated PCs there. It would be interesting, especially for those, like one person I have who hates goblins. Uh, what do you do for people like that and you want to run Weeby Goblins? Well, why don't you make another pre-generated character? Uh, I'm fascinated with having a mite as a pre-generated for Weeby Goblins. Also, um, the Bugbear, the variant one of that, which is the Murd. Uh, swamp sort of Bugbear. Uh, one that is more of a pacifist. Disdains fighting. Very somber, very removed. Uh, a real true outcast that is found within this gob Goblinoid tribe. Uh, so, then you got the Mite which is scorned by the goblins, but you can find a mite within the goblin tribe, society. Um, they usually picked on. Maybe they're a slave. Maybe they're being used to tra train vermin for mounts and such, but that would be a, a great character. So you got the mite, you got the murd. Also, uh, goblin blues would be really cool. Sort of a spy. Uh, one maybe with needs to procreate in a very subtle, stealthy way so that they're not found out and killed since blues eventually take over an entire tribe if left unchecked since they are the dominant gene with procreation. So, blues, mites, and merds. I really like that. Having a pre-generated pre 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 character uh, for each one of them I think would be really awesome for a weeby goblins. I've been entertaining that, those ideals for quite a while. But anyway, I wanted to make a mite PC. Uh, they're really interesting, especially with their uh, empathic communication with vermin. With their vermin empathy, similar to a druid's wild empathy. So, here we go. If you like mites, stay tuned. I will be talking about the mite. Here we go. Um, due to a lot of their flaws, their unsightly appearance, mockery of the mites, their natural cow cowardice, um, yet they have a lot of powerful uh, skills that they employ. Uh, they are derived from fey, so their type, they get the fey for plus two small size so there are some benefits of that uh, they are slow in speed so 20 feet the part where it got a little tough here when creating these is that their ability score modifiers are all over the place we're talking massive weaknesses um, way too many to try and create those as a uh, PC so, some homebrews are needed when trying to make ability score modifiers. Um, as always, the advanced race guide. The advanced race builder in the back of the book. Use this for everything. That's what I do. It's what I like. It's what I do. 
it's great. Helps me out, so may not help you out, but that's what my channel is for anyway. Uh, for people that want to play something that they can't find in any other game. So here we go. Uh, I went with Mixed Weakness. Not what's listed in the Advanced Race Builder. Uh, I had to homebrew my own. This one, uh, minus two to strength, plus two to dex, minus two to intelligence, plus two to wisdom, and a minus two to charisma. So we got modifiers all over the place for this. Uh, mainly because the B series shows that. It's 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 skills. So that's what I got for a homebrew. Minus two cost there. Languages, we are going with standard. Um Another homebrew that I made is Fade Damage Resistance Lesser. Uh, they don't really have anything in the back of the book for the Advanced Race Guide, so I made my own when dealing with damage reduction versus cold iron. So here you go, Fade Blood. Um, they get Fade Damage Resistance Lesser, DR2 slash Cold Iron. <laughs> also, some feeding skill racial traits. Just like the goblins, they are sneaky. So they employ that, that stealth ability. But also they have fast hands for sleight of hand tactics. So you have that as well. So both of those are at a cost of plus five. Um, it's called fast hands. It's not in the race builder section, so it's a homebrew mod there. Uh, magical racial traits. They like to play trickery on their foes. Um, months and months and months they build up this hatred. Uh, to the mockery that they have to put up with, uh, especially uh, local creatures that uh, clash with them. There's this sort of soaking rage as it starts to starts to envelop them more and more. They 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 slowly build up to 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 act. So slow to respond, but when they do, it's quite fierce, and they have lots of skill racial traits that they employ. To seek out bloody vengeance when they carve a swath of destru destruction through their uh, domain. So, Might Magic, uh, they have spell like abilities. At will, press to digitation, and doom. So, I put that as a homebrew for two points. Now, on to Vermin Empathy, just like the Druid's ability there. Um, they're only able to do this to Vermin. Since they uh, bond with them, they have they they commune with them. There's a uh, connect connection between between the two of them. Um, vermin are normally mindless, but this empathetic communication imparts on them a modicum modicum of implanted intelligence. All mites to train medium vermin and use them as mounts. And they even have the ability to um, influence swarms as far as directing them for certain actions with rel relative ease. So that's quite interesting as far as a dungeon setting goes maybe when you run into swarms. Uh, that's a great PC to have on your side there. Um, a lot of roleplay opportunity there. Um, since they're slow in speed they also gain climb though for 20 feet. Uh, they're known for having incredible hatred towards gnomes and, uh, what else? Hatred. Gnomes and dwarfs. Anything with a subtype of that. They develop spatial training against these hate hated foes. Plus one bonus on attack rolls against these humanoid creatures. Uh, dark vision. Out to 120 feet, not 60 feet. They have those huge, huge eyes. Uh, low light vision. They have light sensitivity since they are a cavern dweller. Uh, they stick to the underground for the most part. So bright light would definitely dazzle them. And I went with some alternate racial traits here. I saw one post on a Paizo boards I like called uh, Boggle Eyes. Some mites have developed a more frightening stare. Mites gain the following spell like ability Doom twice a day rather than once a day. Uh, this caster level for this ability is equal to the mites level. 
so it replaces Might Magic. So you give up Prestidigitation, yeah, 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 for for at will, and you can do Doom twice if you want to do that. Also, you have Scent as the alternate racial trait, which would replace Fast Hands. That sleight of hand ability. So that's what I got. Uh, Twenty racial points there. It's a little high. A little bit more than what you would expect with an Asmar, Tieflin, and such. Um, but you, as you can see, they have a lot of skill sets. Really, really great race. I would definitely recommend this for Weeby Goblins. Uh, if you're interested in the Pesty, they are slightly larger, stealthier cousins of the Mites. Uh, known for larger pointed ears, uh, linger, ah, leaner, elongated limbs known for stealth. Uh, really, they are pretty much the exact same as the Might. The only differences I made was that I changed their ability score modifiers and uh, that was it. Oh, and they do have nor normal speed, so they're not they're not uh, slow speed. They have normal speed up 30 feet. And I also added fast on there, so actually uh, total speed Total base speed movement would be 40 feet. So, uh, stealthier, faster, highly agile. And to show that, to showcase that in their ability score modifiers, I went with greater weakness as a homebrew. There is greater weakness in the advanced race builder section, but I homebrewed this just because uh, you need to reflect more of their weaknesses. Um, so, homebrew modification needed for that. Now, if you feel that the Might needs a different array of ability scores, go go for it. Uh, I'm just trying to stick more with what's in the bestiary, what's listed for them, uh, what's what the description is um, as far as their their strengths and hindrances. So, greater weakness, uh, minus two strength, plus four to dex, minus four to intelligence. Plus two to wisdom and minus two to charisma. That's a negative three cost there. Um, the only other thing listed for these, really, is that pasties begin play understanding, but unable to uh, speak common and undercommon. Pasties do not communicate with others, even those of their own race, except through body language and crude hand signals. It is unknown whether pasties simply cannot or choose not to speak. With the GM's approval, you can finally get a uh, decision made on that. Maybe there's some sort of vow of silence, perhaps, that they have, unknown to everyone else. <clears throat> but Pasties with a high intelligence score can choose some of the following languages, Aklo, Dwarf, Gnome, and Sylvan. Alternate racial traits, we got the Boggle Eyes and Scent once again. So really, there's not too many differences with this, so indeed it is a variant race. Uh, Pesty and Might. There we go. Now, on to the one I created from the ground up. Uh, a rare humanoid with a small Might torso that rises up from its centipede body. A bizarre union of Might and Vermin. Something to roleplay, something to showcase. You have the Drow and you have the Drider. Why not the Might and the Mitipede? Uh, that fusion, that... That symbolic re re uh, representation of vermin and might. There you go. Uh, something else to go with the drider. Uh, seemed a little strange to make it like a spider half. But I think the centipede part is really good. It's a really strong representation of their connection to rever uh, vermin. Uh, to have that sort of step up uh, race option there. And it doesn't have to be a PC. You can make it an NPC. It would be a great, uh, perhaps, adversary foe for those cavernous uh, areas. Uh, so I present the Mitipede. If you did want to do a spider type, I would probably call it Miter. M-I-T-E-R, maybe. But this one, Mitipede. Mitipede, however you want to pr pronounce it. I'm going with Mitipede. Uh, so 17 racial points there. They are a aberration. Uh, nowhere did I find that you can put Fey as a subtype. Uh, so, aberration bloodline 
rules that out, washes that right out. Uh, so they are Aberration. Uh, plus three is the cost for this. Size, medium. Uh, so they have medium speed. But I also made them fast as well. So once again, we have 40 uh, feet for the movement. Uh, base land speed. Uh, ability score modifiers. Plus two to dex. Plus two to wisdom. Minus two to charisma. So that's zero for the racial point cost there. Language is standard. Uh, I would say their skin's a little tough, tougher. So natural armor for a plus two cost. Uh, they get that stealth. Being sneaky. Something that carries over from the might. Uh, heritage. As well as the vermin empathy for two points there. They can climb. Natural climber. 20 feet. Plus eight bonus on their racial climb check. Uh, offense racial traits. Here we go. I went with bite and spit. Both of those are a cost of one. Of course, the spit is a homebrew modification. I'll get to that um, in a moment here. There's some other things of note here. They get the centipede body, which is a homebrew, which I'll go in through in detail here. Uh, dark vision would be the same, 100, 120 feet due to those very large boggle-like eyes. And you got the light sensitivity. And as far as alternate racial traits, I would use Might Magic as an alternate. Maybe the bloodline is a little bit stronger. There's some variant uh, traces of the Fae blood, maybe. They're not qualified as a Fae, but maybe some of that residual Fae blood is left there and can be awakened through Might Magic. Uh, so Might Heritage blood. Uh, then you have the Scent, scent as an alternate racial trait. So we go. Mitipede. Let me talk about their offensive capabilities. And everything else I said I would go into in length here. Uh, bite. Mitipedes gain a natural bite attack. Deal 1d4 damage. Bite is a primary attack or a secondary attack if the creatures wield and manufactured weapons. If your bite attack hits, you may inject poison. You can inject your venom a number of times per day equal to your constitution modifier minimum once a day. Paralytic Venom. Injury save, 42 DC, 10, plus one half of your hit dice, plus your constitution modifier. Frequency, once around for six rounds. Effect, 1d2 dex, cure one save. So, using this ability um, to envenom a weapon counts toward your daily uses. So you have that. Also, I presented this homebrew option of Spit. I think it's Millipede or something that can be poisonous. I think one of them in particular can actually spit. So here we go. Uh, Mentipede can spit a poise, poison at a target within 30 feet as a standard action. This is a ranged touch attack. If the attack is successful, the target is affected by the poison just as if it had been injured. You can perform this extraordinary ability a number of times per day equal to your constitution modifier, minimum once a day. This counts toward your daily use of the poisonous bite. And you got the Paralytic Venom with the same stats there. So, uh, there we go. Now on to the Centipede Body. Uh, this one you want to pay attention for. Um, centipede Body. Midipedes can't be tripped. No way. Uh, they have all those legs under their employ. Um, very, very tiny. But it helps with not being able to be tripped at all. Uh, they may not use magic items required in the feet slot. No way. No way you can do it. Uh, in addition, its upper torso is the same size of that of a small humanoid. So even though it is medium in size, its upper torso is the same size as that of a mite. Uh, so, meaning, midipedes use weapons and armor as if they were small instead of medium size. But what makes them medium is that long, sinuous... Uh, centipede lower part of their body so you have that um, I also listed some cavalier mounts here so I'll put those down in the uh, description below this video uh, riding spider and a riding beetle I really like the sawtooth ability of the beetle Serrated mandibles of a riding beetle allow it to ignore a hardness of five or less when attacking objects. In addition, a riding beetle deals one point of bleed damage upon a successful critical hit with its bite. I think that's really cool. 
So, um, with the riding spider, you get tremor sense, which is pretty neat, and some poison capabilities there. So yeah, I'll present those. Um, I hope this is helpful to you. Um, I had a lot of great feedback from some people with uh, the last couple of videos there. Uh, some people, even one particular person, said that they were going to uh, add some of these as options for their game. So that's what this is all about. Yes, this is Pathfinder. Yes, there are hundreds of different options out there. Uh, over, what, 35 plus races to choose from and, and growing with more of the source material that's put out. Uh, even things such as Bastards of Galarian, which has a lot of good, cool um, types, particularly of orcs, or half orcs, I should say, half elves, and, and that. Uh, there's so many different things you can play as, but you are, are going to have a couple players that want to play a particular thing. And they're going to look through this book, maybe, and just still be a little undeci undecided. Uh, maybe you want something very unusual, like a Gearsman, if you're going to be playing Iron Gods, or uh, a Knoll for a Katapesh Osirian campaign. So, that's what this is all about. Those that wonder, those that question, those that are searching for that one particular race, uh, that they, they just need just a little bit of help with. You don't have to use all this that's presented. Uh, take with this what you will. Uh add on to it or change it however you wish uh, free information that is all that's all that's here uh, these are just options I, I like to always make lots of options for my group uh, that's what Pathfinder is all about <laughs> uh, heavy heavy rule set there uh, quite a great learning curve uh, but very rewarding at the same time uh, that's why I, I am a Pathfinder nut so there will be some more things coming soon, um, perhaps some revisions to some things such as the Gearsmen. I'm still working on trying to get it updated more for Iron Gods with my with my group. Um, but let me know if this works out for you, if you like it, if you need any more information on this. Um, or just hit me up with your random stuff anytime you want. Uh, always ha happy to help. So, Alright, that's all we got. Until next time, see ya.